In this short video, we're going to see how we can solve systems of linear differential equations using Laplace transforms. So we're just going to look at a couple of uh, modeling situations which could lead to systems of differential equations. And then we'll do a couple of examples where we solve those systems. So the first system would be if we have coupled springs. And the idea is you have some sort of fixed object. You have a spring connected to it with uh, some mass or object at the end of that spring. And then you connect another spring and another mass at the bottom of the first mass. And of course, that mass is going to stretch the springs and they will reach their equilibrium position where the force of the spring moving up is going to equal the force of gravity pulling down. So then if I displace or pull down the bottom spring, I'm going to get a displacement from the equilibrium position for each of the springs. That's going to depend on their stiffness or spring constants. And, uh, and so now we've got a system. We're going to have each one of these variables, x1 and x2, changing over time. And so we can find equations of motion. Um, to do that, we need to use these um, force body diagrams. The bottom spring is being pulled up uh, by the yeah, I need some subscripts on some of these. But we, we're going to have it's going to be pulled up by the uh, second spring here. So let me just add some subscripts here onto my K's. That's good enough. So K2, X2, K1, X1. And then this is the second spring. All right, so, uh, so the idea is that uh, this, the bottom mass is being pulled up by this uh, spring and the uh, top mass is uh, actually, it's being pulled up by this spring, but then it's being pushed down by the spring that's above it. So that's why we have the x2 minus x1. And then um, the first mass here is uh, being pulled up by the top spring and pulled down by the bottom spring. And that leads to uh, this system of differential equations. So let's use that system of differential equations and put it in some actual values. So we're going to have uh, two different spring constants, 6 and 4. The masses are going to just uh, be unit masses. So they'll have one unit of mass. Uh, the initial conditions for the first object is it's going to start at rest. So that means the other object has to start at rest as well. And uh, the so this is going to be kind of unusual because the uh, first object is going to be given a downward Remember, down is positive, downward velocity. And the second one is going to be given an upward velocity. So they're going to be, the, that uh, second spring is going to be compressed. 
but the top spring uh, should be uh, stretched out. All right, so there's my system. Let's put the numbers in. And let's take the Laplace transform of each one of those. I'm just using the formula for the second derivative here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, collect the like terms for the uh, Laplace transform values and write this as a system. And now I'm just going to solve this just the way I would solve any algebraic system. I'm going to solve for the Laplace transform of x1, and I'll solve for the Laplace transform of x2, and that'll give me an equation, an algebraic equation, and I'll have to calculate the inverse Laplace transform then to find the value of my function, find the equ equation of motion. So I'll just start by eliminating x2. And I'll do that by multiplying the top equation by s squared plus 4, the bottom equation by positive 4. I can add the resulting equations. And now I only have x1. So let me do a little algebra with the uh, term that's multiplied by x1 that can actually factor as s squared plus 12 times s squared plus 2. My right hand side simplifies to just s squared. And then I'll need to use a partial fractions decomposition. I won't show the details to be able to write that as two fractions. And of course, that's something that you would like because this looks very much like the Laplace transform of a sine function and the other one as well. So it's just off by a constant. So let's go ahead and fix that constant. Uh, you know, my k value in the first term is radical 2. Radical 2 squared gives me 2. So I'm multiplying essentially top and bottom by radical 2. And same idea in the second function. So uh, that gives me uh, x1 of t as the uh, sum of two sine functions, which can be cleaned up. Uh, and I can write that as negative 2 over 10 sine of radical 2t plus radical 3 over 10 sine of 2 radical 3t. And we'll do something similar then for uh, to eliminate uh, x1, multiply the bottom by s squared plus 10, the top by 4. When I add those together, again, I still get the same uh, coefficient on x2 as I had in x1. Now my right-hand side has a minus s squared minus 6. And so again, uh, I'll go ahead and find the partial fractions decomposition of that. And Again, these look very much like sine functions uh, with the same uh, period as we saw in x sub 1 of t, but they're going to have different coefficients. So again, I would multiply top and bottom in the first one by radical 2, top and bottom in the second fraction by radical 12. And that gives me my expression for x sub 2. You can also get uh, systems of differential equations in networks. And so we get these two in this particular uh, circuit that we have here. It leads to these two uh, differential equations in terms of the current I1 and I2. If I needed to find I3, remember that I1 equals I1, I'm sorry, I2 plus I3. Well, let's uh, go ahead and solve that system using these values for E of t. We'll have uh, 
our inductance is just 1, the resistance is 50, the capacitance is 10 to the minus 4, and initially there's no current. So this is a first order uh, differential equation. So we can take the Laplace transform. We'll use uppercase i to be the Laplace transform of the lowercase i's. And again, we get a system of equations. And uh, the only thing that's different here is we'll use elimination first to find i2. Now here we've got something interesting going on. Let's see what happens. Oh, we can just choose the partial fraction decomposition. For the inverse Laplace transform, straightforward with 1 over s, also 1 over s plus 100. Uh, but what about uh, the 1 over s plus 100 squared, or the 120 there? Well, we're going to make note that, oh, that's just the derivative of the uh, 1 over s plus 100. I know that the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 100 is e to the negative 100t. And so we just learned about the derivative of the Laplace transform. So when we take the uh, derivative of the Laplace transform, that's going to result in multiplying the uh, inverse Laplace transform by t. So that gives me an expression then for the uh, I sub 2 current. And again, what happened in this last term is uh, since this is the derivative of 1 over S1, S plus 100, then uh, we had to multiply that inverse Laplace transform by T. Now to find, so we found I2, to find I1, instead of using elimination, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and solve the second equation for I1. So I1 algebraically then would be S plus 200 over 200 I2. Uh, and uh, remember, we had an expression for I2 when we found the current lowercase I2. So let's go ahead and just multiply those out. Write them as two fractions. And so I'm going to, this 1200 over S plus 100 squared S, we already know it's inverse Laplace transform. That is the value of lowercase i sub 2. So the only thing that's left is to find the inverse Laplace transform of 60 over s plus 100 squared. And again, we use the property that uh, 1 over s plus 100 squared uh, is the uh, opposite of the first derivative of uh, 1 over s plus 100. And so then we can take advantage and just multiply that by t. You might remember that the formula said that I should have a minus sign, but then when I take the derivative, I get another minus sign. So that's why these terms turned out to be positive. Let me just make sure about that. Sure, but it keeps the same sign. It doesn't change. So in the and the I2, I had a minus sign, it's going to keep the minus sign. But then when I look at I1, it has a positive sign. So when I take the inverse Laplace transform, it keeps the positive sign. So I guess there's some like terms. I could probably bring them together and have my expression for I sub 2.